Hello there guys, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at increasing the damage that a projectile will do um, while we hold down the trigger. So what we're going to do is hop into the game over here, and if you just if I fire at this object you'll notice, if you've got it in HD at least, in the top left of the screen there you'll see that it's doing one damage per, per, per hit. Um, now if we hold the trigger down, so one, two, three, four, you'll notice that we now do 11 damage. Um, I'm just going to quit. Uh, Facebook there, so that's me pinging, sorry about that. So again, let's just hold down the trigger for a bit longer now. And then we're going to release it. And you'll notice we do 16 damage. So let's do it for, say, 5 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we have 21 damage there. So, let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to implement this. So, what I have here is how we've done it, uh, and we're going to use um, functions as well as times on this. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I'm going to do. It's going to totally close down my project here. And I'm going to do this from fresh so that you can see how this works. So we're going to launch the Unreal Editor. I'll make a new project, a new first person blueprint, and we're just going to name this um, Timer Tutorial. Create that project. And then we're going to hop straight into this. So the first thing we're going to want to do is going to want we're going to want to open the first person character blueprint. And in here, you'll notice this section down here, spawn projectile. Now this is where we actually, uh, well, this is what um, Epic Games has already laid out for us as to how to spawn the projectile. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make some adjustments to this. So we're going to move this over here. And to simplify this a bit, we're going to get rid of this section as well as this node, just so there's a bit less to look at. And we only really want to be working with uh, this stuff here. So we're just going to get rid of this comment box here. Um, and now we're going to need to make a new variable. It's going to be of the data type integer. And that is going to be ball damage. We also need to make a new function. Now I've not gone over functions in any of my other videos before. So this is going to be something new. So we're going to go over here and make a new fun function. I'm going to name this increase ball damage. So every time this function is called, what we want to do is we want to get the current ball damage. We want to add um, another integer to it, and then we want to set the ball damage to the new integer that we've created. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase this by, let's say, 10 every time. So if we head on back out to the um, event graph over here, and we're going to right click and we're going to type in timer. Now what we want to do is we want to set uh, a timer by function name. Now the function name is obviously going to be the function that we've just created over here, so increase ball damage. So we're going to go ahead and type that out in here. Increase ball damage. And the time. So how often do we want this to happen? So we're going to do this every second, half a second. So how often do you want your damage to go up by five points? We're going to set ours to something um, quick so we can see a change quickly. So we're going to do 0 0.3 seconds. And when we're pressed, we want to set the timer, and we want it to loop, okay? Now when we release the trigger, that's when we want to actually fire. So we could just go ahead and fire it on over here, but there's a little bit we've got to do before we do that. We need to um, clear timer by um, handle. And we're going to link the handle of the timer to the return value of the timer by function name up here. Now after we've cleared the timer by handle, we can go ahead and link in what Epic Games has already created for us, where we play the montage, we spawn the projectile. There is something that we do need to do to the to the projectile to um, set its damage first of all. So if we go and um, head on back out here to our content browser, open our first person projectile, and this is what happens um, when we hit the object. So we need to make a new variable in here again of the type integer, and this is going to be named damage. And it's it's going to have a default value of zero. That's fine. Um, which reminds me to hop on back over to our first person character blueprint for a moment and set the default ball damage to one. Because if the player just fires the ball, you know, it's, we want it to, if you just tap the trigger, it's going to do one damage. So you can fire it really quickly, but it'll do a low amount of damage. Uh, the idea is that you can hold the trigger, charge up your system, and deal more damage when you release the ball. So if we hop back to the first person projectile, what we want to do over here is we want to get the damage, and we want to change it to a string, and then we want to print that string. Now this is just for debugging purposes, just to prove to ourselves that it is working. What you would do here is you would have it cast to the object it's hit. So if it hits a person, you would take the hit over here. Now, I'm not going to go too much into this, but you would take the hit actor. So if it's a person, you take the hit actor. And then let's say the actor is a player, you would cast to the first person character. 
that way if it's the first person character then you set their health to minus whatever the damage is um, so that's how that would work but we're not going to go into that that's um, not what we're trying to show in this tutorial it's just a brief uh, overview of how you would do that so the damage is going to get printed out and then the projectile is going to be destroyed so we're going to hop back to the first person character and after we've spawned the projectile off the projectile we need to get damage so we're going to get that into that we've just created oh sorry apologize for that we need to set the damage so we're going to call set damage on that and as you can see it, it calls the damage because it's spawning a first person projectile over here the class is the first person projectile and the first person projectile has a variable by the name of damage so we're going to set the damage to whatever ball damage is now remember ball damage is local to the first person character damage is local to the first person projectile what we're basically doing is copying the variable from the um, local we're copying the uh, value of the local variable inside the first person character and putting it into the first person projectile when we spawn it. Uh, one final thing that we need to do after we've after we've finished firing the ball, we're going to set the ball damage back to one. Now the reason for doing this is when we start charging up our next thing, we don't want it to stack up on top. So if you fire the first one and it deals ten damage, when you fire the next one, if you tap it, you don't want it to deal eleven damage. You want it to deal. Um, you want it to go back to 1 and to deal 1 damage. So we're going to set it back to 1 and that's basically our reset. So let's just go through what we've got here. When we press down the fire action key, which in this case is the left mouse button, we're going to open a, a timer that every 0.3 seconds is going to call a tick on this function here, increase ball damage. That is going to set the ball damage to its current value plus 10. So after 0.3 seconds, the value will be increased to um, 11 because it starts off at 1. Um, after that, we, when we release the trigger, we clear the timer, the damage is set, we play a montage, we spawn our actor, we pass the variable, the, uh, value, the value of the variable from our local ball damage variable to the damage variable on the first person projectile actor. We play our sound, um, and then the projectile is traveling through the air, we set it back to 1 and we're ready to fire again. So let's go ahead and give it a test. So if I just tap it over there on that, you can see again that we hit 1. And if I hold it down for some time now and release, you'll see that we deal 51 damage, hold down for a short period of time, 11 damage. And for a very long period of time, we deal 121 damage. Now, you can put caps on this, so if you don't want it to be able to deal more than 100 damage, so let's say your players have 100 health, you don't want it to be able to do an overkill. Um, inside your function, I'm not going to go, again, I'm not going to go too much into this, but inside your function, you would simply do an if statement here. So you would do a branch, and you're going to check the ball damage. So if ball damage is less than 50 or less than 101, then if it's true, then it can go ahead and do that. If it's false, it will just stop there. So that's how you would cap it at 101. So let's just go ahead and give that a test. It may actually go a little bit over. Um, I've not really refined that. That was just something quickly thrown together. So we'll release that 101 damage. Let's just hold it for a very long time, make sure that wasn't a coincidence over there. And again, 101 damage, so it cannot go above 101 damage now. Again, thanks very much for watching this, guys. I uh, hope to see you in the next tutorial. As always, thank you very much. Stay subscribed for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.